Compromise longevity associated with alcohol, motor vehicle accidents, and interpersonal violence, mental illness. Why? Malnutrition, inadequate sanitation, poor or inadequate water supplies, crowded living conditions, inaccessible non existent health care, stress, overwork, poor education, the self perpetuating poverty trap. But note, not heart disease in third world countries because they don't eat like us, right? If you don't eat like, like we eat, then you don't get the diseases of affluence of rich people. So 5% of South Africans, because most of the population of 50 million people are black, die of heart disease. But it's increasing, and they say by 2020, heart attacks will be the biggest killer in this country because the money is just exploding and the, and the black population is coming up and starting to eat like the white population. Next one, please. The disease of affluence, <coughs> chronic diseases. These are non communicable. You can't catch these by touching someone. Heart disease, brain disease, peripheral vessel disease, cancer, and autoimmune disease, obesity type 2, asthma, alcoholism, depression, psychiatric illnesses, large amounts of cheap, refined, fast food, processed, high fat, sugar, fructose, and salt, high consumption of animal and dairy, alcohol, tobacco, and reduction in exercise, greater reliance on antibiotics. Autoimmune disease is an interesting one. If you look at the bowel, the bowel looks like this, okay? This is the inside of the bowel, this is where the food is. The lining of the bowel has got lots of little fingers in it, called villi, right? So it increases the surface area over which your food gets absorbed. Covering these little villi are a single layer of cells. Those cells are brilliant. They determine what can go into your circulation, right? If you have a high fat diet, you damage those little villi. Once the villi are damaged, then protein particles, which are undigested from animal proteins, leak through there and go directly to the blood vessels. And that's called leaky gut or leaky bowel. So now in your circulation are animal proteins. In amongst the animal proteins, for example, is nerve tissue. Because if you eat a steak, there are nerves in it. Okay, you can't cut all the nerve fibers out. The nerve tissue has got something called myelin on it. That's an insulation, like an electric wire has got insulation. That myelin is a tube of insulation. So that that foreign protein from a cow or a sheep or whatever is now in your circulation because your diet had too much fat in it. Right? It's in your circulation. Your white cells and your body's immune mechanism bubbling around the bloodstream say, there's a strange piece of protein here. Let's make an antibody. So it makes an antibody to this foreign protein and knocks it off. Unfortunately, there's a thing called molecular mim mim mimicry. An animal's myelin looks very similar to our myelin. So now in your circulation is an antibody which attacks myelin. <clears throat> so one day it goes into your brain because the fat disturbs a thing called your blood-brain barrier. So your blood vessels become more permeable and stuff that's in your blood gets through to your brain. What gets through to your brain? An antibody. An antibody that attacks myelin. So it knocks off a piece of your brain. And now suddenly you've got tingling in your hand one day and then nothing happens and suddenly you've got tingling in your foot and another day you can't walk. And what are the diagnosis they make? MS. You've got MS. This is the etiology of multiple sclerosis. And this is what was proved by Roy Swain. 5,000 cases, 95% of them stop the progression. PET scans, 10 years later, they can see the lesions, but they haven't progressed. Stop the animal protein, the whole condition stops. And Alzheimer's and dementia are similar to this as you get older, right? Because it's the little piece of little, little strokes which you don't know about, that are happening because the blood vessels, the fine little things are being knocked off progressively. And so you don't remember as well as you used to remember when you were younger. And why? Because you're eating too much fat, and instead of the red blood cells on the outside having a negative charge where they repel each other so that the blood flows smoothly, the fat comes in and coats them, and now they do a thing called rouleau, they clump, right? So the flow through the tiny little blood vessels is reduced by 20%. As the flow reduces, the permeation through the blood vessels is increased. So the stuff which shouldn't get across the blood-brain barrier 
goes across and then you have problems. So the meat is a catastrophe from that reason alone. Next one, please. Okay. What you have to do to live longer, healthier, and heal yourself? Dietary modification, get in the sun, adequate exercise and rest, drink water. The exercise is not critical because this guy, called Esselstein, who I mentioned to you originally with the sun, right, had patients referred to him. He gave a talk to, to the, the cardiologists at the Cleveland Clinic and he said to them, listen guys, I've got this system which can reverse heart disease. And they said, yeah, poo poo that, you know, that rubbish, you know, 25 years ago. But if you have any patients that are like terminal and you say you can do nothing more to them, just please send them to me. I want to do a trial. So he eventually got 25 patients and they couldn't walk three steps and they were in cardiac failure and there was one guy who he describes had, was having angina constantly. So he put nitroglycerin on himself and his wife would wrap him with sarin wrap, cling wrap. So he had it constantly. If he laid down, he got angina, right? He got this guy. In three weeks, the angina was gone, right? The guy now completely normal walks. He had a patient who was one of these. He's got patients 25 years on who were terminal. They had multiple bypasses. They had open heart surgery, stents. They were actually given up. Reversed their heart disease. It was demonstrated with a thing called intravascular angiography where they take a catheter, they put it in, they can actually demonstrate the inside of the blood vessel, not a thing which is a random squirt, right? And they do PET scans of the heart. A PET scan looks at the blood flowing tissues and hot spots and cold spots. And on, on serial PET scans, they were able to demonstrate that areas in the heart that didn't have blood supply got their blood supply back. He was also able to demonstrate, as has been more than adequately demonstrated in the past, that when people have heart attacks, they don't have heart attacks because this is a blood vessel and it's got a little pinhole opening here which suddenly shuts down. That's not the cause of a heart attack that kills you. It can certainly kill you, but it's unlikely. Because when you have a blood vessel which has got a pinhole opening, it's something which has happened very slowly. So as it happens, little roots go out on the side so that the blood tends to bypass the little roots. So it's much better to have a heart attack when you're older than when you're younger. Because if you get a heart attack when you're younger, you haven't had a chance to develop all those tributaries. The things which kill people are heart attacks from a little thing called an atheromatous plaque, which blocks maybe 20% of the opening. What happens is your cholesterol is too high. The cholesterol molecules get driven into the endothelium, the single cell layer which lines the blood vessels. White blood cells come along, gobble the fat up, and they're called foamy cells now. A whole lot of them come along, and they produce enzymes because they're trying to get rid of this fat. The enzymes dissolve and thin the covering over the blood vessel. The blood flowing past here like this tears into that clot. Now there's only 20%, and you don't see that on conventional angiograms. You can't see it. Tears into the clot, rips this thing open and makes a flap which completely obstructs the vessel. What also happens is the foamy cells and the fat, your body says there's something wrong here, and it starts clotting. So it clots up behind here, and suddenly a clot, which you couldn't see on angiogram, which they didn't put the stent in for, kills you, right? Because the blood is piled up behind here. And the only way to get rid of that is to stop putting the fat in your diet. <coughs> so, thin people eat high fiber, a complex carbohydrate. A complex carbohydrate is potatoes, right, which you can eat freely. And um, I'll show you just now. Low fat, low sugar, low salt, plant protein, which is unprocessed, and nutrient dense. Even if the calorie intake is high, metas metabolism increased. Like the Chinese, they're 1.72 billion Chinese, and they eat rice, and they're all thin. And the, even the laziest Chinese, right, who are thin, eat 3,000 calories a day because they're not eating chicken and fish and steak and fried food. They're eating rice. Next one, please. 
fat people eat low fiber, refined carbohydrate, high fat, high sugar, high salt, high animal protein, industrialized prepackaged food. That's the problem. They also don't exercise. Fat people have fat dogs, it's not a genetic problem. Right? <laughs> they take photographs of first gener generation Hawaiians. First, the Chinese and Japanese who go to Hawaii. They're thin. The third generation Hawaiians from China are massive because they're eating Western diets. <coughs> they're eating McDonald's and Coca Cola's and all the stuff that they shouldn't be doing. And they then start dying of all the same diseases. Cancer of the breast is practically unknown in China. <coughs> Next slide, please. Okay, so what are nutrients? Okay, our prime requirement as living beings for energy. We need energy, right? And the real source of energy is calories, and it comes from starch. Starch is a complex carb carbohydrate. Glucose is what your body uses for energy. It's a six carbon chain. There's six carbons here, and they're all joined together like this, and when you join more and more of them together, it starts making something called starch. And starch is something that plants make. We can't make starch. Starch made by plants is so that the plant will grow next spring. So it makes a potato tuber, so that next spring the potato tuber will grow another potato. Mm -hmm. It makes wheat grains, so that next spring you'll get some more wheat, or sorghum, or millet, or any of those hundred things, like corn, for example, is starch. And it's there so that you will if the plant will survive into the next season. Okay? So this is what you need. The best source is unprocessed high fiber. So you mustn't eat, for example, white bread. Because white bread is rubbish. It's just pure starch, it's got no fiber, it's got nothing in it. Fiber is absolutely critical. It's like the broom that goes through your bowel that takes all the toxins and the poisons and the rubbish that you should be getting rid of, right? And you don't get rid of that way. Nature's storehouse, the foundation of all the great civilizations, right? Potatoes, you know, for the Aztecs and the Incas and the, all those South Americans. Rice, corn there as well, rice in, in, in China, right? Wheat, millet in the Middle East, here. Barley, oats, sorghum, legumes. Next one, please. Whole plant foods contain protein, more than enough protein. Because when I say to people, I'm a vegan, I actually went, I took my dog to the beauty parlor. <coughs> Over the road, there's a, a building that's got holistic doctors. So there are four doctors in the building. And I walk over, and I'm standing and looking at the things, and one of them pops out and says, can I help you? And I say, are you one of the holistic doctors? He said, yes. I said, what kind of doctor are you? No, I'm a homeopath, or I don't know what he was. So I said, what do you eat? Because I'm a really controversial, nasty person, you see. So he says, well, what do you eat? So I say, I eat vegetables only. I'm a vegan. So he said to me, where'd you get the protein? I couldn't believe my, what I was hearing. I mean, the guy's supposed to know, right? So I said to him, don't you know that there's more than enough protein in plants? No, you've got, to have, you've got to have some animal. So I said, you're wrong. Anyway, that's another story. I'll discuss that another time with you. But the point is this. What are our protein needs for health? You need 0.7 grams, grams of protein per kilogram body weight. So I weigh 70 kilos. I need 50 grams of protein a day. That fits in my hand like this. The rest of it I don't need. People don't take protein as an energy source. That's very rare. You can use fat if you're really starving. That's the last ditch thing. But you actually use you actually use carbohydrate. Omega-3, this is what people say. You must take omega-3 fish oils because you can't get enough omega-3 from plants. You can get more than enough omega-3 from plants. If you take two tablespoonfuls of flaxseed and you grind them because your body can't digest unground flaxseed, you've got to grind it fresh, your body will convert about somewhere between 3 and 7% of that into all the omega fats and oils that you need, which is more than enough. Minerals, what are minerals? All the minerals, you know, sodium and potassium and copper and iron, you get that from plants. I mean, how do elephants get so big? And, and whales and all the animals that are running around eating grass, they don't eat people. <coughs> and animals, they, they eat grass. Vitamins, all the vitamins you need. Antioxidants, which are critical, because what your body is doing is it's producing free radicals. And the antioxidants which come from the plants mock these things up so you don't deteriorate. We're busy resting ourselves.
because